The education landscape in Gauteng is shifting. This as more schools of specialization open their doors. The schools bridge the gap between grade 12 and further education with sector-specific training. Now, a week ago, a new robotics and coding center uh, uh, called Future Shaper Lab was launched. And on Thursday, the John Orr Engineering School of Specialization was opened as well. Let's find out more from Gauteng Education MEC Banyazali Sufi. Thank you very much for your time this morning, MEC. And I just want to get a sense from you before we get into the details of uh, the different specialization schools that will be rolled out across the province. Why did you find it important to create institutions of this nature and not allow uh, matriculants to go on to the traditional universities uh, once they matriculate? Thank you so much, and thanks for the opportunity. Purely because the labor market is looking for the skills. Um, education will be meaningless if you produce people that cannot be absorbed by the labor market. Uh, education will be meaningless if it can't respond to the economic need uh, of our country. And education will be meaningless if our children can't even participate in the economy. Our desire is to ensure that our children don't look for jobs, but jobs look for our children. Um, and if we can have that balance nice, where jobs are looking for individuals rather than individuals looking for jobs, I think we'll get the balance right. We are targeting 35 schools of specialization across the province. We are now uh, standing at 19. It's still a long way. Uh, but I'm impressed with the number of private companies that have raised their hands and the number of private companies that, that have already a partner with, with us. I mean, we are speaking about Honeywell, a uh, top international company known for its space work, uh, to go to the space world. Um, we've just finalized a good and beautiful arrangement with Sosol in terms of John Orr Schools of Specialization. Uh, we had Nexa, uh, the nuclear company, uh, that is our partner with uh, BMW, Germany, that is also partnering with us, with our schools in uh, uh, in social movement. So, there are lots and lots of companies that are lining up because they agree with our approach. Um, and the only thing we do, we provide um, the school infrastructure and they come with the curriculum, they come with the um, educators or people that can train our children. So we are of the view uh, that the future is about skills and technical skills for that matter. And if we can invest in those skills, um, our children stand a better chance of getting employment. No, absolutely. And I mean, there are a vast amount of technical skills that exist in the world, but these schools have got certain ones that they're focusing on. I want you to maybe touch on the latest one, the John Orr uh, Specialization School, but also what informed the decision um, to introduce certain skills in these schools? Uh, was it based on the direction that the world has taken or the bigger demand that exists at the moment? Well, energy is something that, you know, uh, mm. with load shedding uh, and, and many challenges. We felt <clears throat> as a school, uh, let's work together with a company that is known within that particular space, Sosol, to say, let's train our children about renewable energy. Uh, and if you can see what our children are doing there, I mean, they've just done or built a car uh, uh, using solar uh, as as as, as, as as energy uh, to propel that particular car. I was shocked when I read the uh, young people were still about to launch, but they were ready. And when teachers tell me that these learners come here at 7 a.m., they leave here at 10 p.m., purely because what they're doing, they're falling in love with it. So you don't have to push them. You don't have to follow them. You just have to guide them. So there's no problem of late coming. We don't. They don't have challenges of, of learners that they... Um, uh, staying outside the classroom during uh, school time. So it has just created interest. And, and if you can provide that platform and that opportunity to our children, uh, it's an amazing thing. So I'm, 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 I'm on top of the world, to be quite frank, uh, with, with the commitment of our children, their desire to learn, and companies that they've raised their hands to partner with us. I mean, on the launch of John Orr, Engineering School of Specialization, at almost seven companies that were exhibiting them um, from ones that are creating or building tools, the ones that are in the uh, air conditioning industry because they want to change the air conditions not to consume lots of energy as well. So we, 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 we are impressed uh, uh, with the decision that we've taken and we really love, like to thank all those institutions that have supported us. It was just a dream, it was just a vision to see it in action, uh, humbles one and it also it's also hard to mean to be quite frank.
Mm. There was another one last month, MEC, that was opened um, in Tembisa, and yeah. quite encouragingly focusing on entrepreneurship. You know, that is something that I think South Africa has, a, as a whole, has fallen behind when it comes to stimulating entrepreneurial ventures. So, are you confident that this one, the Tembisa Commerce uh, School that was opened last month, is going to be the booster of entrepreneurial activity in South Africa, or uh, I suppose in Gauteng for the moment, uh, and really just create those jobs? that we're looking for? To be quite frank, tourism and hospitality is the future. How many South Africans want to tour our country? How many South Africans want to host international guests? But they can't do that when the market is full of people that are not South Africans, to be quite frank. So we felt that let's train our children for that future market. Uh, it's going to boost our economy. Um, that particular school is next to an international airport. And we've partnered with a company that is in that particular airport as well, uh, Empire's Palace. Uh, they converted almost four of our classrooms into five-star hotels where children are taught on how to manage uh, uh, the tourism industry and the hospitality industry. And they've committed to train our children. And during school holidays, uh, they're taking those particular children and training them uh, about the industry. So it's, it's an eye-opener. Um, as I said, tourism hospitality it's a big economy we must not undermine it we must not just concentrate on the mining industries we are based in how in reality that the mining industry is shrinking it's going through difficulties you need to create new economy and the new economy of our province is what is tourism is hospitality people want to see our country people want to see our province people want to see our townships but do we have the necessary skills to host them do we have the necessary skill to ensure that they enjoy uh, uh, being in our country. And this is the group of entrepreneurs uh, that we are training. And I'm looking forward to uh, 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 the day that they can open their own businesses and ensure that uh, uh, we visit their facilities and enjoy ourselves there. Mm -hmm. MEC, tell us a little bit about the coursework that happens, um, the results-driven uh, or based uh, um, outcomes that the children exp or the young learners would be experiencing, but also um, after the period of time that they do this training and skills are gaining, do they, what kind of qualification do they walk away with and really the opportunities that are created for them? You have spoken about the fact that because they've got a specific skill, they are looked for and they don't have to go looking for work but talk us through the coursework uh, the length of time and the qualification that they'll walk away with afterwards well fortunately the minister changed the curriculum and introduced something called three stream model the three stream model is emphasized on the normal one that you know where learners go to universities uh, called the uh, <clears throat> the academic stream and then there is then the technical stream and the vocational stream so we are on the vocational stream, which simply means that after they've qualified and they're following an industry curriculum. So let's take something like uh, Honeywell. Uh, Honeywell are producers of uh, fast uh, running computers. So they've got their own standard in the industry. So they train our children in those, and they've got their own schools uh, that they train our own people. So our children will automatically be part of that. But they can still even go to a Tibet colleges. They can still even go to uh, other vocational institutions that can train any other thing. But the good thing is that they are ready for the market by the time they conclude their metric because they know everything about But it's the basics. Uh, it's just to plant the interest and uh, for them to have this particular bug uh, of a certain career, and they follow that particular career, and we support them. The good thing as well as a department, we don't say follow this and you are on your own. No, we provide buzzards as well. So if somebody say, I want to uh, follow this particular career, we as a department, We've got the 380 million budget that we've allocated for Bazaar. So we also support them uh, financially uh, because that's the only way out. Because you can plant the interest, allow them to follow this particular career, then they don't have the financial muscle to follow uh, the career. So we also provide that kind of support. So it's a combination of what the uh, the sector, uh, if, 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 if it's the... Uh, if I take example, social, if it's social sector, you know social, they've got their own training institutions, their training schools. So they'll train our own children uh, during that particular period and follow uh, what that particular uh, sector is training or the curriculum that they're following. And then we also use our normal training uh, institution, as I say, at Tibet colleges. So if they qualify, uh, they want to be an electrical engineer, want to be a chemical engineer, whatever form, they will be in a position to follow those institutions. And they know they've got the full financial support from the department.
Mm -hmm. Just two more questions uh, for you, MEC. The first one, yep. a quick update on the online application process that came to an end. Are you confident uh, that all parents for grade one and eight learners were satisfied with the application process and that things are going to be streamlined quite nicely ahead of the new academic year? Um, and then um, the rumours around you uh, taking over from Premier David Makura, is there any substance to those? No, 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 not yet. I think that one's the East one. <laughs> not yet. Um, I, I saw the Sunday newspapers. Uh, I was surprised, like uh, all of you. Um, I, I'm not fully aware. We've not even started discussing that within the structures of the ANC. I think it's one of the things that um, someone is trying to plant a story within uh, our media. But we've taken note of those things. I think the ANC at the right time and moment will be in a position to attend to that matter. But in terms of our online registration, it's an exciting moment. Let me be honest with you. Now, to have uh, almost 900,000 people going digital to apply in public schools, not even private schools, public schools, um, is a vote of confidence of our public education system. My only worry, unfortunately, is that uh, you only have 200,000 available spaces, and you've got more than 600,000 unique applications. It makes things a little bit difficult for us. It means we must build new schools where they're needed. Um, I think one of the days where we just build new schools because there's a new community. Mm -hmm. There's a clear pattern now where people need their children to attend their, uh, their education. So we'll be in a position to attend those things. But I'm more than excited to be patron that uh, we've closed the, nomine uh, the online registration. We are starting with the placement from the third. And hopefully uh, parents will get those S uh, happy SMSs that will place their children at the schools of their choice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, always generous with your time. That is Gauteng Education MEC uh, Panya Zalisufi giving us an update on uh, the different specialization schools that are being rolled out across the province, uh, but also an update on the online registration process and that placement will be starting shortly, and then also disputing the rumors that he'll be taking over from Premier David Makura, saying those are unsubstantiated, and of course, conversations will happen within the correct structures of the the ANC.